Welcome back to the Healing with Horse Collective. I'm Dr. Jen and it's after our May symposium and I wanted to introduce to you to a very special new friend. This is Bella Mesa, a 15 year old giraffe cross and she has been visiting with us. And it's very, very interesting how she came about being with us here today and I want to share with you how she got here and a very special healing message that she would like to share with all of us. So the symposium was a beautiful, uplifting and empowering event and uh, some of the facilitators we got to be with was Wendy and Andre of Spirit Horse Connections up in Canada. And on Friday they took us on a beautiful guided drumming journey to meet the horse ancestors. Do you remember that? She wasn't there, but she's pretty tapped in. And during this guided meditation, I met a new guide and it was a black and white horse. Only it was kind of confusing because it wasn't really black, it wasn't really white, it wasn't a pinto, but I knew it was black and white. So I was kind of confused when I came back from the journey. And I was talking to the person next to me, one of my assistants, Gina, a wonderful horse trainer. And she said, I saw the same kind of horse. It was black and white, but not black and white, but black and white. And so we were both confused. Looking and chewing on that, right, Bella? <laughs> so Callie Crosby, the wonderful animal communicator who was at the Telesummit this year, was also at the symposium. And two days after the symposium, Callie calls me. She's so excited because she found this mare on Craigslist. And she thought it would be perfect for my husband, Greg. But while she was talking to me, she talked herself into buying Bella, but she couldn't bring her home. So she thought, wouldn't it be great if Greg could ride Bella for a while until she could be with Callie? So I said, sure, it sounded great. Well, I go to meet Bella and it turns out at the time she was black and white. She's a blue roan. Right now she looks blacker, right? But she's not really black or white, right? She's black and white. All of her hairs are black and white. And so here is <laughs> the, yes, the earth creation of that spirit guide uh, that came to us in the journey with Andre. And so that's the power of joining with like-hearted friends, right? So you can create real creations in the world and magical things can show up. Now what's also funny about this is as I was talking about at the symposium during one of my opening circles, I, uh, the horses had given me an affirmation for me to play with. And the affirmation was that people give me free stuff. And I've been playing with that, right? Licking and chewing. Uh, and every time I leave the house, people give me free stuff. It might just be a cookie. It might be a jar of chocolate. It could be anything. But Bella is also an example of people giving me free stuff. And so I invite you to play with the idea that the universe is supporting you by giving you exactly what you need because you are worth it. Right, Miss Bella Mesa? I know. So, as soon as Bella got here, it was very clear that she was not here to be Greg's riding horse. Right, Bella? But she was here to remind me of who I am. And I had asked Callie, one of Callie's specialties is tuning into horses and humans and asking them what kind of healer they are. What do they heal in the world? And Bella Mesa had a wonderful example. She said, what is the word for somebody who is a healer of invigoration but safe at the same time? How do you feel invigorated but safe at the same time? And I thought that was exactly what I needed at this time. Can we move back for a second? Because I had been feeling not so invigorated and not so safe. And so then shows up a healer of that in my life. And she's this big draft cross. She's the most grounded horse I have ever met. She's the safest horse I have ever met. And yet she has a heart that's invigorating. And so we have been playing together for a few weeks now, right, Bella? Yes. And she, she's also very, it's very interesting about Bella, is that she's been a ranch horse her whole life. She's got two brands. She's not, never been much more than an object at, on a ranch to people. And yet, when she got here, she showed me 
that she is a healer. She gets this work more than any horse I have ever met. And I love this idea of the hidden healer, right? There's these horses who are here to help us and they're hidden everywhere, even on cowboy ranches, dude ranches. And they can be found and they can be seen and appreciated for who they really are. Maybe for the first time in 15 years. And this horse communicates clearer than any horse I have ever met. You can hear her, and if you don't hear her, she uses her body to show you what she means. She's being very expressive today as well. She'd really like to go out and eat in the grass. I know, we're gonna be doing that soon. So, but, so she's been spending her time sharing with me this idea of being in your power to the next level the next level of your power, what would that look like? And she was showing me a couple of exercises and a couple of ideas that I would like to share with you guys. So, you're all familiar with your solar plexus, right? Your seat of power. And what Bella wants us to know is that we can all reclaim a little bit more of that power, right? I know. Let's back up just one step so we can show them. By breathing into the space right here, and just not, just, sometimes we just notice it's there, but what Bella has shown me to do is to sort of create a heaviness, a presence. It's just a presence, right? I know, it's about being more fully present in that space and putting energy there. I know it, I know it. And that once we can do that reliably, we can do all sorts of things with that energy. We can direct it in the world. And when we're riding, we can use our solar plexus to join with the horse and guide them without really even using the reins because they can feel the energy of us showing up in our power and directing it in the world like that. And what was really interesting to me, Miss Bella Bella, was this idea she started explaining to me of how we are all creators of our world. Creators. Looking at chewing on that. And we can start commanding the world from our solar plexus. We can start commanding the creation of our world from here, from here and here. A lot of us in this field are right, we got a lot of heart, right Bella? A lot of heart. But we need to combine that heart with a little more power. And we can do that by having the idea of commanding our power in the world. So I was really resistant to this idea when Bella started sharing it. And I started experimenting it, commanding things. And it felt like really, like, uh, that, it feels rude. It feels rude to command. It's like, who am I to command anything, right? Because as women, we're taught to ask. We're taught to almost apologize with our asking. We're taught to be gentle and sweet. I get all that. I'm very good at that. But what if we gave ourselves permission to command to be the commander of our life, to command the energy that flows through us and out of us to create and manifest our heart's desires. What if we felt empowered to command the whole universe, I know, from the very center of our beings? And this is the main teaching that she has been reminding me of who I am and who you are that we have the power to command the universe from the core of our beings. So how cool is that? So I invite you to play with that. Just to start, you can do it when you're healing too, when you're doing healing work. I command. When we do healing work, right, we're often asking. I ask this, I ask that. And Bella was saying, stop asking and just command it. Without ego, it's not an ego thing. And if you, if you have been on a power trip, maybe you need to practice more permission. But for the, a lot of us healers, we would empower ourselves by beginning to command 
our world. So, I invite you to explore what it would be like to stand with a horse, feel how they command their space, how they own their space, how they walk by commanding their energy. Yes? Yes. And what would it be like for you to begin commanding the creation of your world with the help of the horses, with the help of the universe? She's also shown me how you can do this on top of that. So in part two, I'm going to share that exercise with all of us. But until then, may the power of commanding the universe through horse be yours. Thanks, Mesa.